Yo, welcome to triumph.vlog, the daily behind the scenes videos on building a tech and AI startup. Um, if you're new here, firstly, let me move my window so I can read the notes I took. If you're new here with these videos, what I try to do is, is show you what's going on, what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis to, to build this company, to build Triumph, which is, uh, an AI for SEO and artificial intelligence for, for search engine optimization. And the idea is that there will be some take takeaways that you can apply in, to your own business, your own life, whatever. <clears throat> and today for my company, what I've been doing all day is coding. And you may notice that I might not be my normal, charming, rambunctious, charismatic self. And that's because I've been programming all day and it took an hour or so longer than I'm into because I had some archaic bugs, which is just life when you're building stuff. Now the thing is right now, Triumph the app <clears throat> is about 90% done, which as the joke goes, means I'm halfway there. Uh, I'm at the stage where the core logic is done and, and the the work, the business value that, that Triumph creates and my company creates, uh, well one, I already have clients, but two, it's spread out among several different like scripts and programs, probably 10 or 12 or so. And <clears throat> I'm in the process of bringing all of those scripts, uh, bringing them together under one roof and just completely automating everything and making it autonomous like it is an AI. And that one roof is, uh, or that house is a, a Ruby on Rails app. Now, I'm not going to show you my code because it's like secret and there's some uh, like real businessy value stuffy thing is there. And also like who cares? It's just code. Uh, so instead, I thought I'd make a video about how I learned Ruby and, and then Ruby on Rails. So I know there's a lot of people out there. Uh, well, one, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that need to learn to code if they ever want to build anything or not get fleeced by, uh, by programmers. And lose their savings and all that other fun stuff. And also like there's plenty of people out there that want to learn Rails because it's a great career. It's a high paying career. Um, so in this video, I'll talk about, and this has been a multi-year process, uh, what helps, what resources I used, what didn't help, uh, what resources I didn't use. And I'm also going to talk about the, the most, what I think is the most important, uh, let's say factor that will help you learn Rails or Ruby or, or learn to code anything plus some some little bit unconventional daily habits I use. So first, let's get out of the way um, what I didn't use. I never went to a code school or took like a, a formal monthly code class, uh, no formal training, and I also never watched YouTube videos or screencast. And I guess there's other stuff that I didn't use, but I didn't use it so I couldn't think of it when I was making my notes. Um, the reason I didn't use any of those things is Either one, they cost money. When I was starting, I was broke. Or I found the uh, the formal training to have a lot of unnecessary stuff. I, I was approaching this as an entrepreneur. So I was really only interested in just, just building the things I wanted to build. And like YouTube videos and screencasts, I don't know. They're just always too slow. And I watched some, some I watched, I think I bought, it, bought a course one time and, and watched one video and, and just never went through it. Uh, it's nothing against any of those things. I know good coders that use them and, and, and turn themselves into good professionals, professionals from them, but they just weren't for me. Uh, now, more importantly, let's talk about the, what is the biggest key, what is most important, and what's the thing that's gonna help you most to learn to code, and that is to have an itch to scratch. Meaning, have something that you want to build or need to build. That, more than anything, that's gonna drive you and motivate you to put in the daily work you need to, to acquire these skills. And also just by just the act of building that code and writing, or of building that program and writing that code, you're going to learn so much about Ruby and learn so much about Rails or whatever it is that you're, whatever uh, language it is that you're learning that over the time as you build app after app after app, you become a master just by learning all the different classes and methods and uh, finding all the gems and packages that are out there. <clears throat> now that said, if you're just starting out, you don't have and you don't you know have anything in mind. Don't worry. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to build when I started learning uh, Rails either. So if that's the case, the best starting point. Let me 
pulled up right here on my fancy iPad. What the best starting point is and what the best thing for beginners is the Rails tutorial by Michael Hartle. Um, you've probably seen it or heard of it if you're, unless you're like, this is the very first thing you've ever thought about Rails at all. Uh, link it down below. It's available, uh, paid for free. There's like video parts of it as well, but the, the core book and tutorial is free. And <clears throat> What it does, it just walks you through step by step from setting up your code, uh, your, your environment to like deploying live code on Heroku. It's just the best beginning resource. And, and there's a reason that everybody recommends it. And plus at the end, you'll ship the Twitter clone, which is probably not that useful, but hey. Um, and the good news is that by the time you finish that app, or by the time you, you finish the tutorial, you'll have a good idea. You'll most likely have a good idea for something that you do want to build. Now, the bad news is that building an app from scratch is way different uh, than following a tutorial. It's, it's much more daunting. You're essentially staring into the abyss. And personally, this is something that I really struggled with for years. I never, it, it took me a while to learn Rails. I first learned Ruby and was for years deploying, deploying web apps using Sinatra and, and, and also Node.js and other things because I never, quite connected the dots on how Rails worked. That is until I came across this book by a man named Justin Weiss. It's called Practicing Rails. It's it's really for when you're at the stage of a programmer where you can, you can create useful things in Ruby or, or whatever and you just are having the trouble turning that into, into Rails apps. And this was the one resource that really put me over the edge and got me into shipping the live code in Rails, which I've now done multiple times. Um, Justin just gives you a lot of practical tips on how to break your app down into smaller, more approachable pieces. You know, the thing with Rails is there's all this like scaffolding, there's all this uh, like pre-existing code, and it's a little bit daunting at first because it's, it's, it's hard to know which exact levers you need to pull or whatever it is, leverage, whatever it is you do with a lever. It's hard to know like exactly which buttons to push to, to start making a difference. And Justin really shows you how to do that. Um, there was like a really valuable tip that made just the book alone worth the price. Uh, and that was that Justin recommends that anytime you have a feature in mind, what you should do is create a new Rails app, just like a test Rails app and keep a test folder and code that feature up. And once you have that working, then take that code and apply it to your, you know, to the app you're actually building. What this does, it takes a lot of the stress and uncertainty out of building an app, out of you know building a Rails app, and just makes the whole thing more approachable. And next, if you'll excuse me one moment, I have to grab something. Out. So next thing I want to recommend is get a book, get a real life, a flesh book to look at. The thing is that coding is so abstract and so separated from physical reality that I think just having a book there, one is a reference, but also it just it just makes the job seem more real. So I highly recommend get a book on Ruby or Rails or whatever. And yeah, okay, a lot of the definitions might be a little outdated, but um, you know, I use this all the time when I'm coding, just if I just need a refresher on like the high level overview or, or whatever. So I would say get one of these, the standard books. This is the, the O'Reilly Ruby programming language. I'll probably pick up the O'Reilly Rails one now that I'm, uh, doing a lot more in Rails, highly recommended. Um, lastly, I just wanna talk about, lastly, just a, a couple of habits that I use on a daily ba basis. Um, first is I just, just set a goal every day, maybe a module, maybe some function, whatever, some, some, some business logic, whatever it is you're, you're trying to build, um, just set a goal for one small aspect of that to get done every day. Maybe Stripe, your Stripe integration or integrating with another API or building your own API. Uh, something small that you can definitely, small but not too small. It should be big enough that it's a challenge and it'll take you a few hours. But also it should be small enough that you will definitely get it done. And write that thing down, work hard, finish it, and then move on to whatever else in your life. And lastly, the last thing to really talk about is just the actual process of coding itself. When you first start out, 
coding is going to be this real process of trial and error where you're just like kind of painstakingly line by line, character by character, writing things, executing the code, seeing it fail, writing again. Um, as you move on and start to really like understand the language you're working with, your, your programming should be 80 to 90 percent like thinking, planning and researching. Like when I'm when I'm coding and, and most other programs in R like this, you know, I might spend some time, go for a walk, um, write down exactly what it is I'm trying to build, try to fully understand, um, fully understand the code I'm trying to write. And ideally, by the time you, you sit down to actually code, you have the whole script or the whole uh, module or whatever already in your mind. So on a typical day, I might spend 40, 50 minutes just thinking and preparing and then sit down for five to 10 minutes and write out 100 lines of code. And then, you know, probably spend another 30 minutes debugging it, but that's life. Now, like I said, it won't be like that at first, but over time, as you become a master, you'll find yourself better able to think through all the logic and then just execute completely in, in one go. Now, if you ever feel stuck, uh, you don't feel like your skills are growing, you don't have anything in mind what to build, I was there several times, what I recommend is just going back and following that Rails tutorial by Michael Hartle again. If you don't know what to build, just build the same thing, you'll learn some new skills, you'll get some ideas, or there's a, you know, a million other tutorials out there that you can follow just to build some sort of sample app, and, and that'll get you back on the path. And lastly, no matter what, if you can't figure something out, if you don't know what to do with anything with your professional or with your coding life, just Google it and check Stack Overflow. All right, guys, thanks for watching. That's it for today. Cheers.